Hello everyone and welcome to the 13th lecture in the Streamlit series. In this video, we will be talking about cache data and cache resources. So why, when are these cache data, cache resources, these kind of things are used? These things are used whenever you want to skip certain parts of the code while rerunning the entire program in Streamlit. So basically, whenever you click a button or you have a text and you press and enter, the entire script reruns. But the problem is there are certain things that you do not want to rerun. For example, let's say you are downloading a model from the internet. You don't want to download the model from the internet every time the script reruns, right? Or let's say you want to do certain calculations, but those calculations are so repetitive and it takes time. Let's say you are going to add two matrices that are almost one, one million rows and columns and the second mat uh, matrix is also one million rows and one million columns. Even though the operation is very simple, adding mat matrices, but since the size is so big and you have to do it multiple times, you don't want to run it all the time. You don't want to calculate the summation all the time. You just want it to be stored somewhere and then retrieve that result. So this is where cache resources and cache uh, uh, data comes in use. So basically to skip parts while rerun. Okay. Now, when are we going to use cache resources, cache resource, and when we are going to use cache data, not resources, resource. So cache resource is basically used when you are trying to load a model. Okay. And cache data is used when you are doing anything other than loading a model. Now there are other things as well in database. Also, you will sometimes prefer cache resource. But the thing is that we are talking about from the deep learning perspective or machine learning perspective. Okay. So let's say you want to do some simple addition of two big matrices. Well, you will use cache data. You won't use cache resource. Now, what is the difference between this and why they matter? Well, there are different things like, for example, cache data stores the uh, results in serializable form, which means the uh, uh, retrieval is faster and all of those things and also they are thread safe but I don't want to get into too deep because then you know it will not because that is in the advanced level okay we don't have to we don't have to go in the advanced part now let's see an example so let me first import the basic libraries so first we are going to see cache resource so I'm gonna say st dot cache cache resource CE resource okay so the way you do it is you write a function and the and I said you can you should only use it to load a model so I'm gonna say load model okay now how do these functions rerun there are two conditions when these functions will be rerun or skipped to in order to skip a function this ca this st dot uh, cache resource or st dot cache data there are two conditions that needs to be satisfied okay only then it will skip the first condition is whatever data you are whatever arguments that you are passing over here arcs okay these should not change which means one time i should not be passing 10 and the other time i shouldn't be passing 20 it should remain same all throughout okay if i'm all, only passing 10 and i'm not going to change it i'm writing all the code over here over here but this never changes this remains only 10 which means uh, either through a variable or just write a simple number if that condition is satisfied, then you have you have satisfied one of the two conditions. The other condition that needs to be uh, satisfied is the code should not change. So if I'm writing st dot st dot write over here and then I say hi. OK, I haven't changed the number and I haven't changed whatever the code is inside the function. All the code that is inside the function can be multiple lines. Then this function will be skipped even in cache resource and even in cache data. However, if any of the two things changes, this will be rerun. OK. So these two things should be remembered. So in order to make sure I'm not going to give any argument here, which means nothing will change. So I have satisfied the first condition. I need to satisfy the second condition as well. So if I have to uh, load a model, where is my model? First, I have to define the model and I'm going to define it over here. I already have the model. I don't want to show it to you right now because that's not the point of the. So the definition is net. Obviously, I'm not going to show it. Not not even uh, very, very important. OK, so the way you load it is you say first I'm going to prove some things to you. That's why I'm going to write time dot time. OK, now let's load the model. So the way you load the model is you go over here and say model is equals to net. So if you let's say this is a convolutional neural network, which it is actually you are going to have some definitions like class. Then you are going to say self dot con one equal to nn dot con 2d and then pass in the in channels out channels and all those things so you are already familiar with that i'm going to load a torch model i'm going to say 
I already I already have a pre-trained uh, model. So I'm going to say checkpoints equal to torched dot load, and I already have the uh, path over here. So I'm going to print the path. Yes, so I'm going to paste the path rather. Now I have to load it into the model. So I'm going to say model dot load state ticked and now what I'm going to do now I'm going to say checkpoints and here I have to say model state so the basic way of loading a pre-trained model so the pre-trained model is over here and you can see final mnist model dot pth so basically a simple convolution uh, neural network that that can help us to do mnist classification so the simplest example I could take okay uh, I actually wanted it to make a project out of it but then thought that this is too simple so might you know add a couple of more things so might use it for this particular video itself um, lastly what I have to do is return the model again two conditions no argument should change I haven't given any argument so that point doesn't make sense and that condition is already satisfied I am saying I'll not touch even anything in this code which basically means that I am not going to rerun this um, uh, not going to load the model more than once and the way I'm going to check it is I'm going to say model is equals to model equals to load model okay and uh, let's say yes so this is what I'm going to do okay um, in order to just give you a flag variable let's say flag equal to one okay let's just let's just keep it like that you know I'm trying to show to you in the most simplest form Let's go and run this uh, in command. Okay, so if I go and rerun this, uh, you can see over here some time has been shown. I actually had to rerun it before this. So the point I'm trying to make is this. Okay, now what I'm going to do, <clears throat> let me go and pass some variable over here. So let me say uh, np dot rand random dot random and let me just give something like this okay let me just give data over here and here I'm going to give np dot random dot random let me just give it one comma two anything it can be any random number okay I'm just giving it a so the point I'm trying to make it since I'm violating the first condition this model should run every time and the way I'm going to show it is the time will change you go over here and then what you do you rerun you see over here right now it is you concentrate over here 634.20 this should change so I'm going to rerun 703 now I'm going to press R a couple of times you see every time this will be changing okay 1 2 3 you can see 1 2 7 1 2 7 1 4 7 1 5 so every time I hit R this is changing which means that our first condition has been violated by but now what I do I remove this over here and write let's say a constant number 15 okay now I go over here and try to rerun once it will definitely change because the number has changed to 15 from something else 736 now this will not change I am running over here you can see I am hitting R multiple times you can see over here but this number 736 is not changing which basically means that our first condition has been satisfied the second condition also should ha should satisfy which means I should not be writing um, let's say fine tuning the model okay so I should not be saying uh, something like model of um, okay, model of um, let's say tors dot something dot random and then finally I'll be saying loss dot loss dot backward which basically means the model weights will change because back propagation will run that's why we should not even do that so these two things are very very important these are only uses, used for inferencing okay uh, loading the model for inference inferencing will do differently now hope the cache resource is clear the two ideas are also clear the two restrictions now let me show you remo let me remove this from here and let me show you st dot so you have to hit uh, this uh, at the rate sign and st dot cache data okay it almost is the same thing the internal working is definitely different the way it stores data the way it provides back the data in between uh, you know but the difference between cache resource and cache data as I had explained earlier however the important part for us is that we are going to use it for loading model and we are going to use it for inferencing so here I have to pass the data obviously otherwise it doesn't make sense and I have to basically return 
the inferred data so i'm going to pass the data to the model what is the model model obviously i'll be defining it in some time okay here also i'm going to write st dot write time dot time okay so i'm going to write time dot time now what i'm going to do is i'm going over here and lastly i have to define the model so i'll say load load model pass nothing and then i'm going to say two inputs okay input one is np dot random dot random and i'll be showing you the uh, inference part over here okay random and then let me pass the if mnist data size so one is for the batch this one is for the channel which is in the mnist case is one then these two uh, 28 cross 28 is the height and width of the image i am going to have another random uh, zeros so i am not going to have random i am going to say np dot zeros and then pass the same size 1 comma 1 comma 28 comma 28 okay so this is going to be this one and i am going to pass it to inference inference data okay now lastly what i am going to say i am going to write it as output and finally st dot write okay so i am going to show you something first let me just comment this out so every time we will be changing the random because this is a random function the numbers will be changing here also this will be changing so let me go and rerun this function okay instead of data i have to write input okay one more uh, change that we have to make here is i have to make convert it to torch torch dot tensor and everything remains the same and let me go and rerun here output has to change to out so you can see over here the time is 364 here it is 972 so this time has come from the loading model the first one i'm going to show it right i'm going to write over here load time load time okay and here i'm going to say uh, write infer time inference 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 time <clears throat> okay so these are the two things now i'm going to go over here and rerun now ideally since the code of both have changed so both of them will change you can see both of them have changed even the output has changed however if i go and rerun since i'm using random for the input for inference the model the output is going to change okay and this time over here inference time is also going to change so go over here i'm going to hit r but just keep your eye on the inference time keep your eye on the load time and keep your eye over here okay uh, 12 12 and whatever this is i changed over here okay i changed i i hit r this never changed it remained 12 inference time changed because the data was taken from a random sample and obviously this also changed because the output has changed if i continue hitting r this will change and this will also change you can see both of them are changing i'm hitting r a couple of times and these are changing now what if i go over here and then comment the random part out <coughs> and also uncomment the zeros which means now our uh, input is going to be constant so obviously the first time it will change because uh, from random we have gone to zeros so it has changed but now if i hit r nothing has been changing you see everything is same this time is same this inference time is same everything is time everything is same so i hope you understood the video of how to use uh, load model uh, cache resource and cache data you can also use it for loading up pandas data frame let's say you have to download some data from the internet obviously you don't want to download it time and time again so you know you can use uh, cache data over there so i hope you understood the video and bye